All right, welcome back. So today we would like to look at the dangers and hazards of electricity. So let's start off for this particular topic. Okay, so the dangers of electricity. Uh, electricity is present every day in our life and it can be also very dangerous. So in this case, what are the two things that it could cause? It can cause number one, electric fire, or it can also cause an electric shock to people. So what are the reasons why uh, these two could have happened. Uh, so we have identified the two dangers. Now let's look at the three hazards itself. So the first hazard is on damaged insulation. Let's take a look first. So usually insulations itself are made of insulating materials, either as PVC or as rubber. Uh, this materials itself can get damaged over long usage, long time due to wear and tear. At the same time, it, all, it can also be beaten by animals. Okay. So both of these can cause the insulation to be worn off and it can be very dangerous why because uh, if anyone were to touch it itself it can cause an electric shock to the user if it's touched at the same time this exposed wire can also create a short circuit this short circuit may cause and develop sparks and subsequently may cause an electric fire so uh what is short circuit so i have a very simple diagram here itself we have a cell we have a lamp, so a lamp here. We have a cell, and we have wires connecting. So the usual circuit will have its current flowing all over the circuit. Fine. Now, what happens if we were to have a damaged insulation such that the live wire and then the other and the wires inside are able to come into contact with each other? What happens is there will be a new path that is being set up here. This new path itself will allow the current to flow to the new path. Why? Because this new path, this new path has very little resistance. So what is happening? If the insulation is damaged, the bulb will not light up. That's the first thing. Second, current will flow through this new path, the blue color one, because this is the path of least resistance as compared to the lamp. So it will flow through here. The lamp will not light up. And let's look at the equation. We know R equals to P over I. If we were to decrease the resistance, we know that this new path here has very low resistance. We decrease the resistance. Okay, what will happen to your current with the fixed V? Your current will go up. So there's a current surge. What will happen is your wires will get hot. It may lead to an electrical fire. Okay. So let's go back to the next hazard. Uh, overheating of cables. We also know this as overloading. So when there is... Uh, overloading, what will happen is there will be a large current flowing through the wire. When there's a large current flowing through, the wire will heat up. Uh, this will cause the insulation to melt and it will go back to our previous case itself. Once it's melt, uh, it can cause an electric shock if people to touch it itself. Okay. Uh, at the same time, um, all right, so it's called overloading. So let's look at the next point, next danger, the next. Uh, hazard, sorry. The next hazard is damp conditions. So when we use electrical devices in the toilet itself, we realize that uh, it's very dangerous because water is a conductor of electricity and current may flow to the user through this water, which is a conductor of electricity and can cause an electric shock. So this is very clear cut. So now once we know that electricity is dangerous, there's two dangers, electrical fire and uh, Electrical fire and electrical shock, correct. Yes. Uh, the three hazards will be either is overloading, damage insulation, or at the same time because of damp conditions. So what are the mechanisms and what are the devices that we have in our house that actually can protect us? Okay, so we have quite a number of features, so let's uh, follow through. Uh, let's start off first. We start off with a circuit breaker. All our house have a circuit breaker. Um, it's usually behind your door in most of the new houses nowadays. So what is a circuit breaker? It's a safety device that can switch off the electrical supply in circuit when there is an overflow. Current overflow means when the current is too large. When the current flow is too large, it will switch off. How will it switch off? In your respective environment, each of these areas of this switch may flip up. Or if there's too much current, the main one will just flip up. What will happen if the current flows through is very dangerous, it can damage the electrical appliance. It can overheat the wire, can start an electric fire. Uh, why do we want to use this itself? Because it's easy. We can just flip it back down. Everything will be 
functional everything can work again you don't have to replace the whole thing itself okay all right next uh in the old times we don't have a circuit breaker so what we use is we use a fuse so why is a fuse a fuse is basically a safety device to prevent an excessive flow of current it consists of a short piece of wire this piece of wire will melt when the current is large so when it's too large the wire will melt and it will break the circuit and cause the circuit to open to form an open circuit okay uh, that fuse ratings they do not have all the numbers there is a very specific number itself that we use so only we can use this number nothing in between there may be others in between but it's less commonly used uh, so what does this number mean this number are actually indicating the maximum amount of current that the fuse or the wire the fuse can take before it starts to melt so it is the maximum amount of current that it can take before it melts to protect the appliances please take note we should the fuse rating should never be high sorry please take note that the fuse rating should be slightly higher than the current flowing in a normal device that is in operation so it should just be slightly higher and this fuse must be connected to the live wire must be connected to the live wire all right so fuse is the second one let's look at the next one which is on the switches so switches very clear cut if uh, you want to off the electricity switch it off uh, and it's always fitted on the live wire so just take note next we have our wiring in the tripping plug your tripping plug has uh, a certain setup itself that helps to protect your house device what do you need to know you need to know that there are three wires live neutral and earth you need to know their colors earth is green and yellow like the grass that's why it's called earth brown because it's closer to red slightly more dangerous and blue which is uh, the neutral wire you must know how they connect life is here why here because it's connected to the fuse all right if your current from the life is too large your fuse will melt it will protect everybody and the devices next it has to close the loop it has to flow back to the neutral wires the neutral wire is the blue one and at the same time there is one more green and yellow which is called the earth wire we explained in the short while take note there's also a cord grip the cord grip is to grip the cord in case you accidentally yank it out you accidentally pull it out you can hold the wire in place okay so why is the fuse rating for the above plug so in this plug here you can see the fuse rating is 13 ampere so we have 13 ampere what does this mean this means that the maximum current that can flow through a fuse before it blows is 13 ampere so this is the maximum okay so that is a tripping plug helps to keep us safe let's look at number five earthing so this is where your earth wire comes in in this tripping plug there is an earth wire above here why is the earth wire for take note that it's green and yellow the earth wire provides a path that is low resistance it is connected to the metal casing so please take note always connected to the metal casing why is it used for in the event there is a fault in the electrical circuit what is the fault the live wire is not properly connected and touches the metal casing uh-huh so we look at the diagram here live wire touches the metal casing this person touched the metal casing he can get an electrical shock electric shock sorry so in the event this happened what will happen is the earth wire will carry the current away and prevent the users from getting an electric shock so this is one where there is no earth wire okay now let's take a look at the one where it's earth wire is there one let's take a look no there isn't one so maybe it's in the uh, other papers okay so in this case what we want to do is to connect this to the earth wire if you don't connect it to earth wire then you are the earth wire as you can see that this person is getting an electric shock okay so what we want to do is to connect it to an earth wire so we take a wire connect it to the earth so remember this symbol shows that it's connected to the earth so this is your earth wire also take note that your live wire in singapore usually has a potential of 240 volts that is the potential when we draw from our live uh, switches the neutral wire on the other hand have zero volts 
So electricity or electrical current always flows from a higher potential to a lower potential, 240 to zero. Okay, so that is why they are trying to say here, when the appliance is functioning normally, there is no current in this earth wire itself. No current of wire if it's functioning properly. If there is, means the device may be faulty. One other way is to also have double insulation. Uh, some device don't use three pin, they use two pin plug, which means that there is no earth wire, no earth wire. In this case, they use double insulation to protect the user. What does that mean? The electrical cable is insulated from the components of the appliance, and the components is also insulated from the external non-metallic casing. So there is insulation to prevent the wire from coming into contact with the other components inside. And these components are also isolated from the casing outside, which is usually non-metallic, it's like plastic. One example, your fan that you use is usually made of plastic uh, covering. The symbol for double insulation is here. It's just two squares inside each other. Okay, example. Complete the diagram to show how the toaster should be connected to the live neutral and earth wire indicator fuse. So let's look at A first. Live wire should be connected to a fuse, connected to your switch, and then connected to the device. The device will run. You have to complete the loop. Current will flow. We have to complete the loop. And it comes back here. We've got to complete the loop and it goes to the neutral. Remember, live wire has a potential of 240 volts in Singapore. Neutral wire has zero volts. Okay, both the live and neutral have current if it's functioning and in the closed circuit. Both live and neutral have current flowing if the switch is closed. Now, in the event if something happens, if the live wire were to touch the metal casing, what will happen? You need to make sure that your earth wire is connected to the metal casing. Okay, and it's connected to earth to protect your user such that it has a lower resistance. It provides a path for lower resistance. Electric, electricity, electrical current can flow through this path and into the earth. You will not get electrical shock, electric shock. All right, so let's use the example here to calculate on the amount of uh, energy required. So a cathode has a power rating. So this is power used for 0 0.5 hours. This is time. Remember, you want to calculate energy. Write down the formula first. I write down the units here so that I make sure I don't make the mistake. So power times time, power is one kilowatt. I convert 1000 to kilowatt. Time is half an hour. I can get 0 0.5. Now, if each of the units is 0 0.20 kilowatts per hour, one kWh costs 0 0.20 dollars. How much will it cost? Take 0 0.5 times per unit, you'll get the total cost. So to run this cattle, you only take 10 cents for half an hour. Okay, if the kettle was to be connected to 240 volt supply, so now you're connected to the mains in Singapore, calculate the current going through the kettle and recommend a suitable fuse. So we use P equals IV because we got power, we want to find the current. We know that it's going through a potential difference of 240 or EMF. Uh, so we put in the values, 1000 watts, 240. Take note, this is watts, not kilowatts. We find that the current is 4.17 ampere. What are the fuses that we have? There are only the fuses with the following ratings, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 13. We need to be slightly higher than the one that we are operation here. There is an operation here. Slightly higher than 4.17? Uh-huh, only 5 ampere. So we want the fuse rating to be 5 ampere, slightly higher than 4.17. Okay, so with that, we will end on the topic of dangers and hazards of electricity.